Hey, good morning. It's great to see you today. It's Wednesday, the 25th of January, and I can't believe it's right near the end of January. And I said that yesterday, but I just, yeah. So it's what, quarter past eight now when I'm coming on to you. And, um, you know, I'm enjoying this because the I like uh, we've now passed the shortest day and now days are getting lighter. So I'm sitting here and it's getting light and I'm looking outside and um, I like this. I like this. When, I, when, when the days are getting shorter and shorter and shorter, I kind of, not sad, but I, you know, but uh, I don't particularly like winter in some ways, but I do like when when the light comes more. And, you know, it was interesting because I was looking at that yesterday from Matthew chapter 6 about the light, about the light of God flooding our lives, you know, that, the, that our eyes, our spiritual eyes open, so God's light will flood into us all through our life. And I was reading this morning in, in Ephesians chapter 1 as well, and it says, Paul says this, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people who are rich and glorious in, in his inheritance. I pray that, Lord, this morning that our lives will be flooded with God's glorious light. And it also tells us later on, or rather in Corinthians, that um, the God of, for those who don't understand, those who don't believe, the God of this world has blinded their hearts and minds so they cannot see his glorious light. Anyway, um, that's a different preach entirely. We're looking at John's Gospel, chapter 14. Uh, and today we're looking at verse 29. It says, this, I've told you these things before they happen, so that when they do happen, you will believe. I've told you these things before they happen, so that when they do happen, you will believe. See, Jesus was the first prophet. He was the ultimate, well, not the first prophet, but he was the ultimate prophet. He's here prophesying, saying to them, say, look, I, John's gospel, I said, I think B, half it was written about the last week of Jesus' life, and it focuses very much on the disciples. Jesus has spoke many times in parables, and he's, he's there preparing them for his death and for what is to come, for the fact he's preparing them that he's going to be going from them. And um, and he's saying, like, this is how you know it's true, because I'm telling you this, and that's he's, t he's prophesying that, but he's trying to bring encouragement to them. He said, you will know these things. I've told you these things before they happen, so that when they do happen, you will believe. You see, prophecy is vital to us. Prophecy is an essential part. It's one of the spiritual gifts, you know, um, that we talked about in 1 Corinthians 12. Those are important spiritual gifts for us today. We need those spiritual gifts uh, because I would be crazy if someone says, uh, gave me a gift, you know, say, I don't know, say someone came and gave me a gift of a, um, a Merc, a lovely sporty Merc, and they said, "Here we go, Mike. There's the keys." And I'd be like, "Oh, that's great. Thanks very much. That's brilliant, amazing." But I don't take the keys, and I don't jump in the car. And if I don't, if I don't take it and use it, it's not going to benefit me. If it just, if it just sits there outside and looking, oh, that's nice, good. I have no, I have to take it. I have to use it, um, and that's the same with the gifts. Gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are there for us to be you to use to in in our in our work, in our life, in our ministry. Yes, we have the fruits of the Spirit, that's how we know we're filled with the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. Yeah, that's that's on the end there, but it's a really important one. But here Jesus is prophesying, he's, he's prophesied, and he says, I've told you these things, or rather, he's just saying, I've told you these things, so that when they come true, you when they happen, you will believe you will believe prophecy the prophets prophets it tells us in the bible when people bring prophecies that they uh they're weighed by other prophets to see whether they these things come true and that's that's the, that's what we do we we don't judge others that's not our role to judge others because the bible says if you judge then others then you'll be judged yourself we're not pointing the finger judging and sin and all those kind of things but we're to bring, uh, but we bring prophecy. We bring prophetic words, prophetic words. You know, the Bible says this that, that they should be for the building up and for the edifying of others, the body and people. That's what we do when we bring a prophetic word. It should be to encourage them. This is what Jesus was doing. That actually, so when so when they would see that Jesus 
he knew that when he died on the cross that they were going to be absolutely crushed. That in fact they would be like lost because they've been with Jesus three years. He was their he was their world. The, the world re re revolved around him. He was their teacher. If you like, he was their rabbi. And when he had gone, that was be like, well, well, what do we do now? He said, so I'm telling you these things so that when they happen, you'll know what to do. It's the same thing for us. Prophetic words are there to build us up, to encourage us, to help us in our faith. My friends at um, Salt Speakers of Life, Karen re is really involved with me. She does, uh, she does, um, she speaks at that, helps at that, and she does uh, prophetic appointments. Their general rule is actually that when you bring a word of prophecy over someone, that you speak words of life, words of life. You know, because our words are important. The words we say, we can speak words of life. We can speak words of death. If we speak words of judgment and pointing the finger and judgment like this, we're speaking words of death over people. But we need to speak words of life to encourage people to say, come on, you know, God has all these plans for you. He to plan to, to, you know, to, for you to have a hope and a future because he loves you. Has he, and, they had, you know, and sometimes, and sometimes, um, I also heard another story, but um, you know, where someone says, "Well, what if you see something bad in someone?" I say, "Well, actually, you could turn that round for good, rather than saying like you 'You're a really dirty, rotten sinner.' You know, if you don't change, you're going to get blitzed." To turn it round, to encourage them, to make, to to encourage them, not and not to and not to shame people. We're not about bringing shame to people, but we are to encourage people to 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 edify them, to build them up, so that they might go on further with their relationship, be more in love with Jesus. This is what Jesus was saying to these guys here. He was saying, look, I'm telling these things so that when they happen, you'll believe, you'll have faith. Your faith will grow. Your faith will increase. You will be stronger in your faith and you will know what to do. Prophecy is there as a guide to help us, to show us, uh, to give us a guide. And prophecy, prophecy obviously always has to be in line with the word of God. Might say a bit more about that later on. But listen, time's gone. Hope you have a great day. Take care. God bless. See you again tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.